Welcome, I'm the dentist. In our Dent Agenda, we will be starting by the first chapter, History Taking and Examination. These are the points included in the first chapter. And here is the detailed content that will be discussed throughout the first chapter video series. Starting by first impression, presenting complaint, and the three points of history taking. History taking and examination are always the first thing you do before you provide any healthcare service to your patients. Starting by the first impression. By first impressions, we mean that you should pay attention to the following. Firstly, your patient's body language, from the point they enter your dental office and during the interview. Also, you should carefully pick the questions you're going to ask them and be a good listener and pay attention to what they say. Also, always remember to introduce yourself at the beginning of the dental appointment, never let your patient leave without knowing who you exactly are or having to ask you what is your name. When you ask your questions, always pick open-ended questions to allow your patient to talk about their complaint. Never use yes or no questions or leading questions. However, with the more reserved, less talking patients, it might be necessary to ask some leading questions or yes-no questions to elicit relevant information or just help them to talk for you to understand your complaint better. Then moving on to the presenting complaint. Usually, you should start your interview by asking general introductory questions like, why did you come to see us today? or what is your problem and always make sure that you document or record this information in the patient's own words. Moving on to the symptom. A symptom is what the patient feel and what they experience. When you ask about the symptoms, you should ask about the following. Firstly, you ask about the onset which means when did that start? Then you ask about the frequency, which means how often do you experience that feeling and for how long does it last? Then you ask them about the exacerbating or relieving factors. Does that feeling become more or less with cold or hot foods or drinks? And then you ask about the pattern of the feeling. Is it gradual? or is it starting all of a sudden? Then you ask about what they experience. Is it getting better, worse, or just staying the same throughout their time? And then you ask them, is the feeling, for example, the pain, getting better or worse during day or night? Now talking about pain specifically. When you're asking your patient to describe their pain, you should ask them to tell you about specific things. Firstly, the origin of the pain. Of course, if they are able to tell you which tooth or which part of their mouth is causing the pain. Also, ask them if the pain is localized or radiating. Localized meaning that they will be able to localize the tooth that causes the pain. Radiating means that they will tell you the whole lower right side causing pain or the right side in general. I cannot specify whether the upper or the lower. But bear in mind that dental pain never crosses the midline. So when your patient is confused, the patient will be confused between upper and lower on the same side or between the teeth in the same quadrant. Then you ask the patient about the pain character. Is it sharp, shooting, dull or aching pain? Usually, it might be a little bit hard for the patient to describe this one unless they experience an organic, real pain. Otherwise, it might be quite confusing. 
also ask your patient to specify their pain intensity or severity on a pain scale from 0 to 10. Of course, this one is subjective, but at least it will give you a clue about the pain severity and the tolerance of your patient. Now, moving on to the history taking. Now, moving to the first point of history taking, which is dental history. In this part, you should ask your patients about how often do they go to the dentist? For example, every six months, every year, quite frequently. You just ask them to get information about their motivation, likely attendance patterns, and also it will indicate the patients who change their general dental practitioners quite frequently. Then you ask them when did they last see their dentist and what did they do. It will give you a clue about the present diagnosis and the presenting complaint because it might be associated with a previous dental treatment that they had. Then you ask them about how often do they brush their teeth and for how long and if they are using mouthwash, flosses or dental dental brushes. It will also give you a good clue about their oral hygiene and also gingival condition. Then you ask them about if they are aware of any barofunctional habits they experience like grinding or clenching their teeth or biting their nails because it might lead to temporomandibular joint disorders and also teeth problems like incisal wearing and so on. Then you ask if they ever had any pain or clicking in their jaw joints while opening or closing or yawning because it might indicate any temporomandibular joint pathology. You also continue by asking them how do they feel about the dental treatment. It will give you a clue about their consciousness and anxiety levels. Then you ask them about how do they think about their appearance or their teeth when they smile or when they look in the mirror. It will provide you with a good information about their possible needs or their expectations, what they are looking for in a dental treatment. Then you ask the patient about where they live, their home, where they are located. It is quite useful because it will tell you about their socioeconomic status and also the fluoride level in their tap water, also their traveling time to your appointment and you take all of that in consideration when you're scheduling future appointments or in case of cancellation as well. You ask the patient about their job and occupation. It might be a good evidence for the socioeconomic status, their level of education and the availability of the patient to attend different appointments. This also might let you know that changing routines of the patient if they have night shifts or long road trips and so on. Then you ask them about the last dental appointments and treatment they got. For example, a previous extraction or something, because they might tell you about any problem they experienced during having general anesthesia or local anesthesia. Then you ask them about their snacking habits. It will tell you about their sugar intake, um, also the caries rate and erosion possibilities, according to that type of foods or drinks they are usually having. Then you confirm all these are up to date and accurate each time you see your patient. Now to the social history. In this section you ask the patient about firstly their smoking habits, do they smoke or not? And if yes, what exactly do they smoke, for how long and have they stopped or not? Then you ask them about their alcohol intake, do they drink any alcohol or not? And also the number of units they consume in the week. 
then you ask them about the frequency of sugar intake, the sugar included in their dietary habits, whether in the foods or drinks or snacks, whatever. This is quite important because it gives you information about the head and cares and also their cares rate and it will make your patient more aware about what they eat when they know it's gonna be analyzed or recorded. Also, bear in mind that many different foods or, or drinks might be staining factors and it will also will give you a clue about what to expect when you examine the patient. Then you ask them about your, your, their occupation, it might have an effect on their teeth. For example, if they are using their teeth in their, in their occupation or if the routine of their work will affect their dietary habits or appointment attending. In these specific social questions, it is quite important not to be judgmental. These can just be helpful in getting to know your patients better. Now to the medical history. There is quite much to be said for asking a patient to complete a medical history questionnaire. And here's an example of one. And always double check at the recall. In case of any doubt or before any major operation, always contact the patient's general medical practitioner or the specialist they are attending before proceeding. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe.